the other time I was just analyzing prayer the Lord began to tell me son you know even the way you pray is wrong that's why you see I'm avoiding the midnight prayers because I'm learning prayer he began to tell me you know the way you pray now you need to move from that level and I was asking what do you mean and today is when he opened a scripture he has been teaching me partially he said the first thing is that men pray in tongues some to intimidate others some think now that I'm praying in tongues I'm more of a believer this is it I'm now a Pentecostal this is the rubber stamp and he said many have never understood why we pray in tongues Paul writes and says I pray in tongues more than all of you but he also cautions the church on the abuse because it can be abused so I began to look at now our generation how we are um, valuing tongues but there is lack of wisdom and revelation I'm the one who began the tongues festival and I'm happy but I think the Lord wanted me to begin so that he can release understanding so that it can be impactful and one of the reasons why tongues are there is to silence your mind that's the first when you begin to pray in the spirit you don't pray in understanding are we together so your mind is not involved in that operation so you pray in tongues to silence your senses logic calculations and narratives when that faculty is silenced you are now ushered to a realm and in that realm you must begin to pick the burdens of god now when i pray with my understanding let me assume i'm believing god for a job the only job i can believe god for is that which i have seen are we together if i'm believing god for a car is that which i have seen my friend drive so that means my prayer life is dictated by what men are handling and what my eyes have seen but in hebrews the bible says faith is the evidence of those things that are not seen so there is a realm where things have not been seen though they exist so if i don't silence my mind i cannot enter into faith many of the things you will see a man with a shoe you admire but do you know there is a shoe god wants to give you that no one has worn am i speaking to anyone so we pray from the realm of what our eyes have seen so right now we will do benchmarking somebody say benchmarking and it is not bad so we'll go to one church and see go to another see how they have put their houses and see go to another and see how their offices are and see then what do we begin to do we begin now to improve or duplicate but when god was anointing you and calling you he never called you to duplicate the anointing of moses because the assignment of david is different so there must be a seeing in the spirit that Moses never saw. And unless I silence my mind, unless I am praying for my business, but my, my mindset is so much preoccupied by my competitor. But God is saying, faith is the evidence of those things that your competitor has not seen. But your appetite is of your competitor. God is saying the competitor is not the problem. I want to show you what no eye has seen, nor has it entered the ears of men. But if you want to live in the realm of sight, competition will intensify. Just go to Hebrew. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence. Tell your neighbor there is a realm called the unseen realm. Can I tell you the truth? The church we are about to build here has never been seen. But it is in existence. So I must ah, I must pray and sit in the spirit fast and then come and implement it. When you begin to deal with men of prayer, they sound mad. What they have seen, you have never seen. And whatever men have not seen, they tend not to understand it. Especially if you want to win in Kenya, begin to see those things men have not seen. Kenya people have money. It's only ideas that is the problem. You just excel in a certain area. Everyone will come and invest there. So we must begin now. So when I'm silencing my mind, I am now entering where the Bible says, we do not know to pray how we ought to, but the Holy Spirit. 
So now my partnership is with the Holy Spirit who searches the deeper things of God. So the Spirit will begin to draw the intentions of God concerning my life to me. Because I might be praying according to my current situation, but God wants me to pray according to my ordination and destiny. And the devil can keep you busy with a marriage battle, but destiny is bigger than marriage. So every mountain experience, Lord, restore my husband, restore my marriage, restore my marriage. And the Lord is saying, search the deeper things. The day you locate my deeper thing, that man will align. So the devil can keep you in small battles. So now when I close my eyes in tongues, so I have a business. I've gone to the mountain. Uh, the Lord has spoken, open it. I want to know the name. I want to know the operational formula. I want to know the structure. I want to know the model of operation. It cannot be only in the economic area. I need to study commerce, but I need to engage in the spirit. So I'm holding that thing in the mountains. Then light begins to get in my mind and patterns are deployed. And then I begin to write down. They did a, 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 a medical research. They discovered when a man prays in the spirit, his mind, his mind. Two researchers have been done so far. I've seen them. The first one, they said, when you begin to pray in the spirit, the logical faculty closes. And the second thing, you enter supernatural dimension of the mind. You can imagine how we have wasted tongues. Those 30 minutes of tongues before service, someone should be crying because of what they have seen. People are praying you, you are drawing patterns. Because there is a scene. It is not, oh Jesus. It's not just tongues to, to place around church. Shadabadade, shadabada, debadia, skata, idabo, shada, skata. No. Something must come. There is a solution. The, the, the spirit begins to touch the deeper things of God. And then you begin to get the patterns, the blueprint of your life. And you download it in your system and say, I have heard. And I know this is the direction. I know that dimension because the, the former church where we came from it was built from tongues. I used to just close my eyes and see images and structures and then draw. But the Lord gave me the whole template. I remember the man building it was a pastor. He was telling me, welcome at the Bahu Kunawambia what I saw is not there. That's where everybody puts it. I saw here in the middle. Then I told him, and the Lord told me to build a studio church. And I closed my eyes and I'll see these lights. And I'm like, because the Lord knew COVID was coming and the church was to become global. So if I was to look at how Limuru are building, I will not have built as how the Lord wanted me to build because these were unseen. Hallelujah. Are you getting solutions? So there are things that you need clarity. Hold them, sit them with them in tongues until the light of God shines up.